In this tutorial here, I'm going to show you how to draw this wave tiering design in 2D design. So you can get a design that's very grouped up on the laser cut. By following the tutorial here, you'll be able to then design your own tiering in 2D design based on one of the concepts we came up with earlier. First of all, I'm going to go down to the start menu, and I'm going to hit T, the text off design tool, and open up 2D design for E3. If this pops up, we can just click off to get to the left you have the toolbars that I on the side here. The first thing I want to do is draw a 60 by 60 box. And that's because the maximum tiering size is going to be 60 by 60. So I can click on grid lock and that means when I start to draw my shape, I can click my shape, my rectangle tool here on the left hand side. When I start to draw it, it's going to stay attached to the grid point. And each grid point is 10 millimeters apart. So I can count out 60, or six sorry. And I can also look at the dimension down here next to rel. And as you notice, as I drag on my rectangle out, you can see it changes. The dimensions change there. And I want that to read 60 and cut to 1060. So I can click there. Then select my select tool. And I want to change that to be purple. And the reason for that is I don't want the laser cutter to cut power and gray of that box there. So I'm going to make it a color that is just going to ignore that. So I'm going to make that purple there. So I've got my purple box. Now, what we need to do is we need to get our image, background image that we're going to draw around inserted into the software. So I'm going to go down to the file explorer down here, which is a little folder icon. Click on that there. And we want to click on this PC, LEI group, resources, technology faculty, S1 digital faculty, 2D design. And we're going to click on JM tiering tutorial picture on LR. And just double click on that to open it up. We've got a right click on the image itself, which is a copy. We go back into 2D design, so we're going to click on the bottom right here under edit, duplicate, so our image is retained there. We can click on the middle yellow square there, and that allows us to move it. So we can move that down to the middle of the map. To make it easier to adjust, we can turn off the grid lock at this point. The grid lock button on the right hand toolbar there, so I'll turn that off. And my box is now behind me. So in this case, the box is off me. So edit, edit, and put you back. That's the image behind the box. So now I can choose the yellow corners. I'm going to bring the in, make it about the right size, and then put any of the yellow square boxes on the edge. And resize that there. Put you there. Finally, put that there. When you come to do this with your own tiering, the whole image is going to Certainly the design itself should be in the 60 by 60 box. Once you've got a position, I would recommend you zooming in so you can actually actually see the work on there. And that's it. So before we just do a black box, we're going to change the color aspect. What we're going to do this time instead is we're going to change the color of our line first before we draw um, our line around the bottom there. So I'm going to click the path tool right here. Bar there. So we're going to go up to the TOL, which we've got the color, which is the line down the top. Click on that there. I'm going to change that to red. And I'm going to click OK. We're going to leave a nice little overlap at the end. And we click on the roll. I'm going to do one more line on the side, so click, 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 on and engrave it, that, that line around this line. And you have the smaller the gap in the software, so it will not allow you to get it. If you're just trying to do it by eye, it's very hard. That's a little bit. So 
we're not going to get to use any of the part of the intersection and we're just going to go X a bit. The bigger you make this, the easier it will be. You can always zoom in using the zoom time zone to make it easier. Next I'm going to use the line tool to make sure I have my back. So I use the line tool, I'm just still going to use the blush. I'm going to change my color to black. Now I'm going to go back to the path to match that the last part I'm using. Once we go over that, I'm going to go down here to trace. If you actually have this line too early, you have to select which of these lines you want. And you do this. And that's much better than just going to have a lower line. The more lines you have, the more that you have to make gaps, the more that you have to make gaps. So we've got a line here, we're going to use a straight line next, go back to the source, back onto the path, go back a little bit over there. Lines are attached to the left, so we have no issue with them being there. So click there again, click there again, double click on this, and you'll see it's nice to go over that again. These lines are joined together, so you don't need to worry about this. Another tool similar to that there is we've got those point lines. Most of the detail there, we've got one line there. So now I'm going to go to use the art tool. The art tool is going to take two first points. Two of them that all the two. Just down here. Go halfway up that line. It's nice to go over that. Double click. Sorry, just click there to go over that. So we've got all the letter detail added. It's not as as hiding as it used to be. So I'm just going to hold the zoom tool, making sure you've got a special in this section. And I'm going to zoom in using. I can just keep keep the noise in, and the bigger they are, the easier they are to remove. And I'm just going to keep it tidy. And now we're going to go in. If you at any point you think it would be a one take to do, because you've got to click edit, undo, and make it easier. There's only one undo in this software, so it always gives you straight away to do it. Very simple. Click the leaves, click the leaves on the timer. What I like to do is I want the J and the N to be really white on the plaster. So I'm going to fill those areas in with black and black and black. So I'm going to click on Bound Fill. And it pops up this little section here. So I don't want the color to be turned to red, I just like it to be turned to black. So I'll click on Fill, fill click on Black, click on Color, and it's all done. Now I can pick the area I want to fill. So as long as you've got no gaps, it will pop up this here. Again, M again, that's my M again, again, no, now you can see why I've got the white line, in laser cut we'll just ignore that, it will just be plain lines, and it will be unengraved lines there, it's just how everything goes white, so it's quite just as natural and natural as you've got on the plaster, and in this case I'm going to use blue, that's the blue. You might be able to get on. 
Let's just make it ugly. Let's go IQ in more than that. Run the search until I want that color to be red. I want that color to be well. That's fine. Just put that right there. Make it red. Okay. And I can just remove that. Again, if you need to move that, you can just remove that yourself. You can use that to stay put. Make sure you've got good gap Otherwise, it's like three. Make it nice and small. Cool. Make it nice and small. So the gap there. So make sure you pull this out nice and big. And that will be the one that you need to do. Cool. Finally, we need to get the check on the So the SPS is up in the back there. Ready? Reading that across there. Have you got all the lines in? Have you got everything completely there? Okay, so we'll just select this real one. And that means we'll be ready. If at this stage here, you can you want to do that right, and then you want that back to be checked in, so just edit, and do what you need to do to check that in. And you see that you can then add some more details in. So we can move that out of the way, and that's how it's going to be checked. And you're ready to have the 